Oh, today is super fun. I've got J.C. Taylor with me. We are reading Luke chapter 15, three parables about God's love for humanity. So come and read it with us. Please. Welcome to Bible Time, everybody. I've got a special guest. Hi. J.C. Taylor Brown. She's been begging me to do a Bible Time with me, I think. Have you done like two or three already? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've done three. Three, but she was begging to do more, <laughs> which is a good sign when your kids want to start reading the Bible with you. So, <laughs> thanks, Jay. And we happen to be in Luke chapter 15 today, a very special chapter. Do you know why? Why? You it's a parable. You will know why when we read it. Yeah. <laughs> so, JC, will you say a little prayer over our... Bible reading time that everybody out there will hear from God today? Pray. No, I want you to pray. Why? Be because that's part of it. Just a little prayer. So I want to pray. What do I pray for? That everybody will hear from God today and do what he wants them to do. Okay. Okay. Dear God, I pray that when everybody watches this Bible time, they will hear from God and they will become believers if they're not already. And that um, everybody will enjoy this video. And uh, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Lord, help everybody hear from you. All right, let's start reading. Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, this is what it says. Now the tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to hear him. Who's a tax collector, Jay? A tax collector is, um, so everybody pay, pay, pays taxes, mm -hmm. and there was one person who collected all the taxes and gave it to a special person, and that was a ta the tax collector. Do you know why tax collectors were hated so much? Um, because um, they sometimes took the money for themselves. Right, so if you owed the Roman government nine dollars and I came to you and said you owe ten dollars and I took the ten dollars and gave the Roman government nine and kept a dollar for myself then you would probably be pretty upset about that because I was stealing extra money yeah and wouldn't that kind of like really hurt your feelings especially like, if you were a Jew you do that? well what would happen at the time is the Roman Empire was ruling over the land of Israel. And so all of God's people, though they wanted to rule themselves, they were ruled by the Roman Empire in terms of government. So the Roman Empire would hire Jewish people to go and collect taxes from other Jewish people. And they really didn't like them because they would oftentimes steal from their brothers and sisters. And so tax collectors had a really bad name. And then there's this other term, sinners. Do you know what that means? Um, we're all sinners. We are. <laughs> but, oh, what's your knees? Um, uh, we're all sinners, but at the time, they were judging against certain people, thinking, oh, you're a really bad sinner. And so it was anybody that had a reputation for being a bad person. Oh, I thought sinner was that you do something against God. It is. Oh. And we all are. We all are sinners in, because we've all done something against God, but... At the time, certain people went by this name as a title, or people would be called sinners if other people thought that they were especially bad. So the point is that people people were judging specific people and specific sins and stuff. So, Okay, so it says this. Basically, it's starting to say that these people that society looked at as bad guys, they were all drawing near to hear, excuse me, Jesus. Okay? This is just really important to set the stage for what's going on here. This is the context is that these quote unquote bad people were coming to hear from Jesus because they were interested. And then it says this. And then the Pharisees and the scribes, they grumbled saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So do you know for who a, a Pharisee I, is? Wait, for a second I thought you said they, they ate. Like... They eat the sinners. No. <laughs> Do this. I don't know. Okay, let's start. Let's start here. What's a Pharisee? Dot dot dot. 
like a religious leader, okay? Yeah. And a scribe is somebody that would write the scriptures down or rewrite them, and so they're also a religious leader. Do you know what grumbles, grumbled means? Um, grumbled means like you like, uh, like, like you're moaning? Yeah, yeah, let's just call it complaining. They were complaining, they were upset, they were frustrated. Why were they upset? This is what it says. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Why do you think they, they were upset? Um, because they were bad. Stop fiddling. They were like bad people. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't like that they were eating with them because they were sinners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they thought that Jesus or any other religious leader shouldn't be seen with with quote-unquote bad people, shouldn't be hanging out with sinners, that they should avoid people like that, which is kind of silly to us because we should love everybody, right? Yeah. But that's what they thought at the time. And we're and, all sinners. Yeah, we're all sinners. Some people. Right, and so they were judging other people, thinking, oh, you're a sinner, but maybe feeling like they weren't when we all are. And then this, JC, this is really important, eats with them. And this is important for anybody out there that doesn't know. For a Hebrew... For a Jewish person to eat with somebody was more than just sharing a meal with them. It was a sign of saying, we are okay. So they would never eat with somebody that they were in a war with or that they didn't like or that they were in a fight with. They wouldn't eat with them because eating with somebody was like a sign of saying, I forgive you. We are in right relationship with each other. Okay? So when Jesus is doing this, it's as if Jesus is sending the message to the sinners, we are okay, me and you. And so they didn't like this, okay? So here's the context. The this is of the lost sheep. This is, well, that's just, the, that's just the subtitle. This is the context, the yellow box, <laughs> that Jesus is hanging out with. Can you stop moving around and stuff? <laughs> yeah. It, it keeps banging it and makes the noise on the thing, okay? Oh, so okay. are you where you want to be? Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the context that the the bad... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm thirsty. My... I'm sorry, I'm thirsty. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right, so this is the context. The bad people were coming to Jesus because they're interested in him. The, the religious people were upset because Jesus was hanging out with the bad people and eating with them as if to say, we're okay. And because this is going on, it says, so he told them this parable, okay? So because this is going on, Jesus makes up this story. Now, JC, what's really important about a parable is it's a story that Jesus makes up. Did you know that? Yeah. It's a story that he makes up to make a point. So anytime Jesus makes up a story to make a point, we have to really pay attention to it because it means that everything in the story he includes for a reason. You gonna fall asleep? No. Okay, so let's listen to what Jesus' story says. He says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he, has, when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep, my sheep that was lost. Just so. So that's the story part, and now he's telling what that means, okay? Just so. I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. So, How can he no makes one up a need repentance. Great question. Do you think that nobody needs repentance? Uh, I don't think that's true. I think everybody needs repentance. So do I. And I think Jesus does too. Jesus Jesus believes that too. Wait, so then why do, why do... He said that to point out in them that they thought that they were too good to need repentance. So he's saying this to point out to them that everybody's lost and needs saving. Everybody needs to repent. But these guys, they thought that they were too good. They didn't need to repent. And so he's calling them out on their hypocrisy. And he's pointing out to them that uh, as a good shepherd, he's going to go 
and search for the ones that are really lost and save them. But what's sad is that those people that are judging him are the ones that are kind of lost and they don't even know it because they think that they're good. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So when he's talking about a lost sheep um, and the shepherd going and finding the lost sheep, do you know what he's talking about? Um, well, he's talking about, like, if there was a hundred people, like, because we're his children, if he w- lost one of them, he, um, he would always go and find every single one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know that song, Reckless Love, that you like singing? <laughs> yeah. That song is, is based out of this passage. Really? Mm-hmm. I... Yeah, it talks about leaving the 99. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. See this? Will he not leave the 99? Yeah. You know, there's no mountain you won't climb up, etc. No shadow you won't lie up. Yeah. yeah. So it's, t- it's, it's, be- it's because Jesus himself was the one that told us in this story that he came to seek after even one person. Even if there's just one person over there lost and hurting and broken, he'll go after that one person because that's how much Jesus loves us. Wow. Isn't that awesome? All right, let's read this next one. And then he goes on. So so remember, this is the context. The tax collectors and sinners were coming to hear him. The Pharisees saw it, and they didn't like it because he was hanging out with them. So he tells this story, and then he tells a second story. He says this, Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the whole house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, She calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I remember watching some kind of video about that. And, um, like, I remember that she lost a coin, and so she turned on a lamp and started sweeping everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then she found the coin, and then she looked out her window and was like, everybody rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. Yeah, isn't it funny how Jesus says in both stories, rejoice with me and rejoice with me, and that there's gonna be joy in heaven, and that there's gonna be joy before the angels of God. Isn't it interesting that Jesus is so full of joy when somebody who's lost is found. Isn't that cool? What does it mean like when someone's lost and they're found? Well, if you if you don't know God, you're living in a lost state of life. Oh. Like you're just lo- you know, lost without him and But what if you believe but you like know who he is? Like you know him. Well then you wouldn't be lost. But if you don't know him and you're, you don't know what your purpose is and you don't know what forgiveness is and you don't know God's love and you don't experience his presence, then it's like living lost. But when God finds you and you find God, you're found. You're in relationship with God. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So what I think is that we need to do a two-part Bible time because we're almost out for today, <laughs> and we're gonna come. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna film a second one right now, the parable of the prodigal son, because it's a really cool one. What do you think the <laughs> conclusions are uh, from Bible time today as we close this video from these passages right here? What What are your conclusions what like? Conclusion a... What are conclusions? <laughs> a conclusion is like, what's your takeaway? What's your thought? What did God speak to you from these verses? The story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin. If you are sitting here just reading the Bible on your own and wanting to hear from God, what what in the in these words of Scripture spoke to you, stuck out to you? Um, what made you think, oh, that's cool, or that's something I can change in my life today, or that's something that I should apply to my life? Is there anything in this Scripture that has like spoken to you at all? Well, like. The entire thing just like made me think of a girl in my class who like doesn't believe in Jesus Mm -hmm. and like we keep on trying to like tell her Um, but then I like I like 
think like I read this and then like Jesus is like working on her, I yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if you can hear that, but our dogs are just barking and going crazy. How annoying. <laughs> they always do that every time someone's even, someone even walks by the door. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Sometimes it's, can, can, there's a lot of distractions that'll try and stop you from reading the Bible and spending time with God, but it's important to spend time with God. That's a really good conclusion, JC, to think about somebody else. You're thinking about your friend. You're thinking about somebody. You're recognizing that Jesus loves that girl and loves everybody that doesn't know him. And sometimes God might want to use us. It sounds like you're already trying to share the love of Jesus with her. And you're not going to force it on her because that doesn't help. But you're just going to share and always be there for her and always love her. There's actually and two kids like that in Two, class. yeah. So let's, I want to I say a little prayer for those two friends of yours right now. And maybe we can say a prayer for anybody else out there uh, that has friends that don't know God. That we, that God will use us to help them come to know God as well. Does that sound good? Dear Jesus, thank you for these uh, words of your scripture today. Thank you for your heart coming across in these stories. We thank you for the friends that we have that don't know you and just the beautiful way that you've designed each one of them as your children. And we ask that those that don't know you, that, that are separated from you, that they'd come to know you, they'd receive you, surrender to you, find salvation, love, and forgiveness, and eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you again for part two tomorrow. Ah, ah, but one more thing before we go. Leave a like and subscribe. Subscribe <laughs> and ring the bell, bell. notifications. All right, we'll see you for part two tomorrow. Bye.